So let's talk about the mini mental state exam. Grab your piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazebu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at the mini mental state exam. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such amazing content every time I post. Grab a piece of paper and your pen and let's go. So remember that this mini mental state exam also referred to as the standardized mini mental exam is going to consist of 11 questions that are going to be asked by the practitioner in an attempt to assess the cognition of a patient. It's going to be assessing cognitive impairments such that you may detect problems with the thinking, the communication, the understanding, as well as the memory. And we often use the mini mental state exam in examining patients with head injury, patients with CNS infections, or other infections, but most importantly, it's used in patients with dementia. So it's going to be used to assess the severity as well as the progress of the cognitive impairment in an individual over time. So we can use it as a marker of progression of the condition. We can also use it as a marker of how we're going to detect this person's response to treatment. So the entire mini mental state exam can actually take roughly about five to 10 minutes to carry out. And the questions are roughly and usually the same or very similar regardless of who is conducting the test. So remember that the areas of assessment are going to include orientation to time and place, attention and concentration, short-term memory, which is recall, language skills, visual spatial abilities, visual spatial as well as visual, visual and spatial uh, relationship between objects, as well as the ability to understand and follow instructions. So each of these is scored with maximum points. When you talk about orientation to time, we have a maximum score of five. So we start off from a very the broadest perspective to the most narrow perspective. And I'll explain what I mean by this when we look at the questionnaire. And then we also look at the orientation to time that is generally correlated to the future decline of this patient. When it comes to orientation to place, the maximum number of points one can get is a five. So this is again from the broadest to the most narrow from, let's say, the country where this person is, the province, the area and even the hospital to even the flow of the hospital where they are at where they are at if it's like applicable for that particular hospital and this is sometimes narrowed down to the streets and sometimes even the flow of the hospital like i said then you have registration which is out of three so repeating named uh, prompts so give them about three different names like for example uh, an apple a penny and maybe a chair then you have attention and calculation, which is scored out of five. So here we do the serial sevens, and we also ask them to spell the word world backwards. And it has actually been suggested that the serial sevens is much more appropriate for those that are in places where English is not a first language. So this test actually has a lot of limitations, especially in our setup. Then you also recall the three objects that you told them before. So this is the registration recall, the three objects you told them to keep in their mind. Then the language is scored out of two. You tell them to name a pencil or to name a watch. That's if you have a watch. If you have a pencil, you'd need to tell them to name these objects. You just simply point at them and ask them what this is. Then repetition, you tell them to say a, a phrase back to you. I'll, I'll show you which phrase which we actually use in the mini mental state exam. And then for the complex commands, it's given a score out of six. So this one varies and can actually involve drawing a figure that is shown. I will show you again with the questionnaire what figure we actually use. So here's the exam. So this is a sheet that you get. So here you place the patient's name. Here you place the examiner's name, your name, and of course the date when you did the exam. And remember the maximum score you get is out of five. So you ask the patient, what year do you think this is? So obviously I'm going to answer if they give you that it's 2003 and it, didn't, and it is indeed 2003, we give them a one point. You ask them what season it is. If they tell you that it's summer and it actually is summer, you give them a score of one. You ask them what date it is today. If they tell you the correct date, you give them a score of one. You ask them what day it is. 
If they tell you the correct day, you give them a score of one. You ask them what month it is, you give them a score of one. So as you can see here, the maximum number of points you can get from the orientation to time is a five out of five. Then you ask them where they are, where we actually are. The um, state, if it's applicable, in our case here, I would say the province where we are, the country where we are, the town where we are, the hospital where we are, and the floor where we are, where, whether we're on the ground floor, the second floor, the third floor, or the fourth floor. And if they get each of these correct, you give them a, a single point for each and every one of them. Then you come now to the registration. So you name three objects and you give them one second to say each object. For example, penny, you tell them to say penny and to keep it in their mind. And then you, you tell them to say them one by one. So you name each of them one by one. Then you ask the patient to name all three of them, all the three objects that you have said. Then you give one point for each correct answer. Then uh, you repeat them until the person actually is able to learn all the three objects. Then you should count in the, the, the trials that you have repeated this with the patient to register these three objects in their mind. And it should be simple objects that they can actually keep in mind. For example, if it's you're trying to get them to register a penny, then they don't know what a penny is. It, it may be a bit difficult, especially in our setting. So you name these three objects and you this is now getting registering it into their memory. Then now you come to attention and calculation. Here we use what is known as the serial sevens. So now you ask them from 100, you tell them to subtract seven each time. So you from 100 minus seven, you go in 93, 93 minus seven, so on and so forth, until you they give you about like five answers. You give them a point for each correct answer. Now, as you can see with this particular point here, it's very difficult if someone hasn't gone to school or if someone is not so good at math. If the serial seven is actually a, a bit of a difficult, you can actually use the serial threes uh, to do this but of course this means that someone must have gone to school they must have at least reached somewhere around grade 8 to be able to actually do this so you should stop when they after they give you five answers and remember you shouldn't judge them based on the order that they have given you you should judge them based on the previous answer for example for the first answer if they got the first answer wrong and they gave you maybe an answer like 90 then they subtract 90 minus 7, then they give you 83. Remember, the second one will be correct with reference to the previous answer that you got. So just keep that in mind. Then you also do ask them to spell the word world. Uh, first, you ask them to, to spell out the word world as they write it, W-O-R-L-D. Then you ask them to spell it backwards. Then you give them points based on that. And then whichever one has higher points here, that's the one that you're going to record. Then you ask them to recall the three objects that you told them before to keep in mind and you give them a point of each of those three which they actually record. Then you come to the last section which is the language. So you ask them to name a pencil and to name a watch. You point at the watch, you point at the pencil. Then you ask them to repeat the following sentence, no ifs, ands or buts. They should be able to repeat no ifs, ands or buts. Then the next stage is to follow a three stage command. So there are three things that you're going to be doing this to, to do to this patient. So you're going to tell this patient to take the paper. There will be a piece of paper in your hand. Then you you tell them to fold it in half and then to put it on the floor. They should follow these exact um, commands. So they should take the paper, they should fold it in half, and they should place it on the floor. Then then after that, you should they should read and obey the following things. You write it on a piece of paper and you show them that close your eyes. So once they read this, they should be able to close the eyes. And as, you, as you've seen, it should be someone who's able to read and write. Then you can ask them to write a sentence out. If they manage to do this, you give them one point. Then of course you ask them to copy the design here at the bottom, which is this inter, intertwining uh, pentagons. Then after that, you add all the different scores that you get from this and you have a total there that you're going to put your total score. So remember that the maximum score that you can get from the mini mental state exam is 30. A score that's 25 or higher is considered normal. A score that's below 24 is abnormal and could be possibly indicative of cognitive impairment. This is, of course, a big possibility, like with inverted commas. So remember that any score that's less than or equal to 9 is going to be severe cognitive impairment. Between 10 to 18 is moderate cognitive impairment. Between 19 to 23 is mild cognitive impairment. Then remember that the mini mental state has some limitations. If you get a high score, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have cognitive impairment. The opposite is true. If you get a low score, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have dementia. 
So remember that the, this test is going to be pretty much based on certain things. Certain things like physical disabilities, language, speech, education level, even cultural differences can greatly affect how you're going to score on this test. So for example, if you get a highly educated person with dementia in the early stages, they may still score a very high score on the on the test, but it doesn't mean that they don't have the condition. Or if you get a patient that has motor deficits and they have difficulties in writing and drawing skills, you may get a lower score in this patient, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have dementia. So you can do certain things to actually maximize the benefits of the mini mental state exam. So the Tomberg as well as McIntyre in 1992 rec recommended the following things. So number one, we must use the mini mental state exam as a screening tool to actually screen for cognitive impairment. And we should use it as a diagnostic adjunct for ind individuals that actually get low scores. This can be actually need for them to be further evaluated. We shouldn't just use the mini mental state as a sole thing to diagnose dementia or to differentiate the different various forms of dementia. Then we also should use certain cutoff points, 24 to 30 for no cognitive impairment, 19 to 23 for mild cognitive impairment, 10 to 18 for moderate and anything that is 9 or less considered a severe cognitive impairment. That's the second recommendation. The third recommendation is that we must use this in, of course, put into perspective the patient. This should be a patient that has reached at least grade 8 education and they must be fluent in English because it's very difficult to translate this into home language and of course it may change the answers that you get on the uh, test. For example, if someone has a low educational status, this may actually increase the likelihood of them having a low score and actually you misclassifying this normal individual as cognitively impaired. The third thing is because you should also consider doing the serial sevens and the worlds together and not consider them as separate entities because they are not equivalent. So whichever one gets the higher of the two, then that's the value that you're going to be recording. So remember that in a scoring, in scoring the serial sevens, each number must be independently compared to the prior to the prior number. As I already told you, if they got the first one wrong and then they get the second one correct, you still give them a point for the second one being correct because sometimes some individuals may not be so good at math. And of course, the wo the word worlds must be spelled forward as well as backwards, and you should correct them when they spell it forwards, such that when they spell it backwards, then you can judge them subjectively. Then the words apple, penny, and table can be used for the registration and the recall. If necessary, the words must be administered up to three times in order for you to actually obtain this perfect registration, but the score is actually based on the first trial that the patient must actually be given. So remember that the mini mental state exam is going to help in differentiating different types of dementia and people that have Alzheimer's disease may actually score significantly lower on orientation to time and place as well as with the recall and compared to those that have dementia that is due to Lewy bodies as well as vascular dementia or Parkinson's disease dementia. I really hope you enjoyed this video on the mini mental state exam. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss such amazing content every time I post. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.